Do you think the risk reward in European equities is starting to skew towards a little bit more reward given the sell-off Monday through Wednesday? I do think so, yes. I mean, the, there's no question that Europe is facing a lot of headwinds. We're repricing the growth outlook, and that's problematic. But at the same time, you know, what, when we look out, I think what we're going to see is, you know, positive vaccine news coming soon. We're going to see all the news right now is on targeted restrictions, lockdowns, but uh, ultimately these bear fruit, right? We're even starting to see it in Ireland right now. So a week or two from now, I would suspect that that case growth, which is surging right now, starts to stabilize. We've seen it in countless countries, right? There are behavioral changes. People wear masks. People, you know, are, are focused on um, uh, not having these super spreader events. And that moves down the caseload. And then that's typically when markets start to rebound. They see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I, I, I do think we're approaching a buying opportunity in European equities. Yeah. Evan, the, the happy talk here is stochastic, which is Greek talk for pointy. Okay, great. We've had pullbacks here that have been pointy. I'm not going to get out the dates right now, but every time we go down, we come right back. Does this downdraft indicate the same kind of treatment? I think so, yeah. I, I, I think that, um, you know, right now we're kind of in this air pocket, right, in the fourth quarter where we know the news on COVID is, is not great. Uh, we know that we're going to have to wait a bit for U.S. fiscal policy, right? Um, we know we're not actually getting the vaccines for a while. And so what we're what we have to go through into a brighter first half of 2021 is is kind of a softer fourth quarter. And so it, it's really the the ability of the market to not so much not fully look through, but acknowledge the weakness right now, knowing that there are better days ahead. Um, and you know, the market is forward looking. So I would suspect you know, the, what the repricing we're seeing right now is a is a reaction to was going to be a week or fourth quarter, but very soon, you know, the market will look forward to better days ahead. Evan, what would you have to see to rethink your position that brighter days will be ahead for markets, not just the economy? Yeah, so a, a few things that we're, that we're looking at. Clearly, in Europe, we want to see those caseloads stabilize, right? We, we want to make sure that this is following the playbook of what's happened in, in other countries. Uh, if it's because of the weather or other reasons and cases continue to surge in Europe, then that's an issue. And then we'd have, we'd have to reconsider. Um, we're watching credit very closely. Like I said, there's kind of this air pocket. It's really unfortunate that we didn't get pre-election fiscal stimulus. It's really unfortunate that we can't really count on anything in the lame duck session. And so credit will really tell us, like high yield credit will tell us if um, you know companies are going to be able to make it through and, and avoid defaults, and if consumers you know they are going to be able to adjust, still have enough savings that they can still spend in the fourth quarter. Um, so we're watching both financial market indicators and also the, the coronavirus data. Arguably the pressure point for the Federal Reserve as well. High yield spreads yesterday out by about 20 basis points. Not at that point yet where I think the Fed's going to be too concerned. Where I think it's always interesting, Gavin, is not just the news alone, but how the market responds to the news. Tech, the worst hit sector in yesterday's session. Evan, what did that tell you? Yeah, that was that was quite interesting because you'd think in a the narrative is that coronavirus concerns are, are driving everything. But if that was the case, you would expect that that tech would would hold up reasonably well. Um, relative to, say, value or, or more cyclical sectors. But it was the word NASDAQ was the worst performing U.S. index yesterday. And so that was a bit that was a bit puzzling. I think uh, what may be happening here is just, you know, this underlying, hey, we have an election in a few days. Uh, we have a probably what's the most likely outcome, which is a blue wave, where you're going to have, I think, policies that are less friendly to tech on a relative basis to the more cyclical stuff. So you, you, if you get that blue wave outcome, yields are going up. It's going to stress the, uh, the, the longer duration growth plays. You've got uh, tax increases, which are disproportionately going to hit technology, healthcare, and the like. Um, you've got, yeah. a, a, as well as capital gains taxes. So I think there's still that underlying anticipation where people don't want to be too overweight tech ahead of that potential election outcome.